Dear students, in the morning first session I had covered about uh, flexible tanks resting on a firm base. In my second session I had covered about a circular tank with rigid base resting on the firm ground. In the session number three I am going to talk about uh, designing of a rectangular tank which is again resting on a hard uh, ground level. What is difference between rectangle tank and circular tank? Right. In rectangle tanks, no, there is no development of hoof stresses, whereas in the circular tanks, there is a development of hoof stresses, whereas in rectangle tanks, there is no development of hoof stresses. However, there are other forces which are going to develop, which I am going to tell in detail as we go to the uh, my session number three, that is designing of rectangular tanks resting on a firm hard soil. So, so let, let us uh, go to the pro problem concept for this, uh, this one. So this is design example three which shows about designing a rectangular reinforced concrete tank with an open top for storing 68,000 liters of water. The inside dimensions of the tank may be taken as around 6.5 meters into 4.5 meters. The tank rests on a horizontal ground and its vertical walls are rigidly connected at the edges and also along the base. Use M25 grade concrete and FE405 steel and draw a neat sketch of the reinforcement details. So this is the data given for our design example 3. So let us go one by one. So to start with, to proportion the tank dimensions. Capacity of the tank required is 68,000 liters. So dividing that by 1000 will give you the volume in cubic meter which comes to 68 cubic meter. Next B, the length of the tank is taken as 5.5 meters. I use symbol B because B is the symbol also referred in the code that is IS3370. I am using same notation here also. The length of the tank I have shown it chosen as B and the width of the tank I have chosen it as C as 4.5 meters, 4.5 meters and H the depth of the water, the depth of the water, the depth of the water we required is we have to divide the capacity of the tank that is 68 cubic meter divided by area of the tank, area of a rectangle uh, B into C. So volume divided by B into C will give you the depth of the water as around 2.75, 2.75 meters which I will round off to 2.8 meters. So 2.8 meters is the height of the water uh, in the tank and considering the free board of 0 0.2 meters at the dam at the top the total of the tank the total of the, the total height of the tank i will represent by symbol a because a is the symbol or a is the destination which has been used in the code of is 3370 so i did not a that is the h plus 0.2 that is equal to 3 meters so a refers to a symbol A refers to total height of the tank that is 3 meters. So I use notation, I use notation uh, B, C and A so which are notations which are used in IS3370. Next. Materials used M25 grade concrete and deformed bars of FP415. Great. Ah, deformed bars of FE 415 steel. Permissible stresses again are referring to IS3370 part 2. We get them as direct tensile stress in concrete and uh, permissible bending compression stress in uh, uh, concrete, tensile stress, permissible tensile stress in steel, sigma ST, are the values which have been referred from IS3370 part 2. Next is Design coefficients, same coefficients, M refers to modular ratio on substituting the values we are getting as around 10.98 and the neutral axis coefficient K, I told you about, I explained about uh, neutral axis, so what is meant by neutral axis layer, neutral axis K, neutral axis coefficient K comes to around 0.478 on substituting the values. The low round coefficient J, J works out to 0. 861, 0 0.861. Next is the balance moment coefficient Q that is to locate the 
balanced movement coefficient q comes to around 1.535 newtons per square millimeters. All of this refers to design coefficients which must be calculated in the working stress method of design before we are going to actual designing of the structure. Next, we refer IS 3370 part 4 and in our case we are referring to moment coefficients for individual wall panel where top is free, top is free, bottom and vertical edges are fixed, bottom and vertical edges are fixed. So, this is the condition table 3 refers to directly refers to our problem number 3. So, invariably we have to see the uh, requirement as per the problem, as per the problem based you need to select this table. So, table in this case present case table 3 is the one which suits to our problem requirement. Okay, A. So, I told you A is the total height of the tank and B is the width of the wall. W is the density of the liquid or specific of water and horizontal moment is calculated by the expression Ny W X uh, Next is what is the calculation of horizontal movement and calculation of vertical movement. Now, with respect to axis, let us see this. Now, this is the origin. This point, what I am showing there, that refers to origin, origin, and this is the y axis, and this is the x axis. This refers to y axis, and this refers to x axis. So, we are referring a ratio called as uh, B by A, B by A. So, the ratio of a B by A, B by A and X by A. We offer, refer to this two ratio that is B by A and X by A. We refer the ratio B by A to locate which direction or which coefficients we must refer for our particular case. And again, the water pressure is a triangular water pressure which is acting, which is as shown in the figure. Next slide. Yes, this is the table number 3, wherein we have obtained the movement coefficient for an individual wall panel, top free, bottom and vertical edges fixed. So, this value varies for different value for B by A, different values of B by A, B by A with value of 3, 2.5, yes, uh, 3, 2.5, 2. And again, it continues to next this one. Yes, 1.75, 1.5. Yeah, it continues, it continues, continues. Yes, next. Table 3 from IS 3370 part 4 is considered for calculating the design forces in this tank, as I told you earlier also. Calculation of the forces for the long wall, for the long wall. Yes, for the long wall, B. Dimension B is 6.5 meters, 6.5 meters. Total height of the tank A is 3 meters. The ratio B by A comes to around 2.17. This 2.17 I will now round off to 2 because this is 2 is nearer to 2.17 in this present case. 2 is nearer to 2.17 in this present case. So, the maximum vertical moment coefficient Mx obtained as minus 0 0.086 at a value of y equal to 0 and x by a equal to 1 at the value of y equal to 0 and x by a equal to 1, y equal to 0 and x by a equal to 1. Let us see where it comes in our particular table. X. <coughs> So, this is value of 2, this is the value of 2, x by a equal to 0. So, x by a, b by a, we are fixed to 2 and next is x by a equal to 1, x by a equal to 1 comes here, 
Yeah. So this is two. X by A equal to one. X by A equal to one comes to this. Come to this row. On this row, y equal to zero. Y equal to zero means we have to refer this column. So if we refer to this column, the value which we obtained is m x minus zero point zero eight six. So m x value discussed by m x value. So m x value comes to minus. 0.086. Please, I tell you all of you, the value is not clear legibly in this one. You need to refer this from the code book. I actually told earlier also, with this code books are freely available in the Google platform. You can download the PDF of this code book. So please do keep your code book readily when you are referring to this uh, my video. So you need to refer from this. So it comes to minus 0 0.086. That is coefficient of your max where y is equal to 0 means where y is 0 means for the exactly this point at this base at this point that is the point where I am getting maximum bending moment where I am getting maximum moment where the value of x by a equal to 1 by well, the value of x by a equal to 1 the coefficient is minus 0 0.085. Similarly, Hence, the maximum vertical, co vertical moment is mx w a cube, mx w a cube, mx is the coefficient, w is the density of unit weight of water and a is the total height of the tank and substituting these values, we are getting maximum vertical moment, we are getting maximum vertical moment at the base of the tank as 20, minus 23.22 kilometer meter, the sign is minus indicates that it is a negative bend, bending moment, uh, the, the, that is significance of this one. However, we consider the absolute value of this uh, uh, bending moment for our design purpose, for our design purpose. So, this is the moment at the base, obtained at the base of the long one. Next, maximum horizontal moment coefficient, coefficient m y is obtained as minus 0 0.06. This is obtained at the value of y equal to b by 2, value of y equal to b by 2 and x by a equal to 0, x by a equal to 0, x by a equal to 0 and y is equal to b by 2, b by 2. So, let us go back to over this one, x by a equal to 0 and y is equal to b by 2. x by a equal to 0, x by a equal to 0 on value of y is equal to b by 2. So, this is our value of x by a equal to 0 and y equal to b by 2, yes. So, this is where, so this is the where y is equal to b by 2. So, this is the point where we get the maximum coefficient for m y, we are going to get the maximum coefficient m y. So, this value of m y Yes, this value of coefficient m y was as minus 0 0.060 and substituting this in the formula, we get maximum horizontal moment as 16 16.2 kilo newton meter at x by a equal to 0, at x by a equal to 0. Next, calculation of forces in the short one. So, what C will becomes 4.5 meters because this is the 4.5 meters is the dimension of the short wall and A is actually 3 meters and the ratio B by A, the ratio B by A, so in the place of B, I will take the value of C. In the place of B, I am taking the value of C because the ratio is given as, the values are given for B by A, so in the place of B, I will take the value of C that is 4.5 by A that is 4.8 by 3 and this comes exactly to 1.5. So, 
So I need to refer the value of B by A as 1.5, 1.5, ah, 1.5, okay, we shall go one by one. Maximum vertical moment coefficient Mx is obtained as minus 0 0.06 at y equal to 0, y equal to 0 and x by A equal to 1. Let us examine this case, My, let us examine this case. So that case corresponds to one point five. One point five. This is for one point five. This is for one point five. Yes. Y equal to zero. Y y value of y is equal to value of x by a equal to one and y is equal to zero and y equal to 0. So, we were getting this maximum coefficient as around 0.04. You are getting the maximum value of minus 0 0.04, minus 0 0.044, where value of uh, y is equal to b by 2, value of y is equal to b by 2, and x by a equal to 1 by 4, x by a equal to 1 by 4, x by a equal to 1 by 4. Let us go and check once again this, what this value is. y is equal to b by 2 and x by a equal to 1 by 4. Yes, 1.5, yes, 1 by 4, yes, this one, yes, we need to see in this value of x by is 1 by 4. So, on this row, if we search, we get the maximum, yes, this is minus 0 0.044. So, this is the maximum coefficient what you are getting as minus 0 0.044. You need to refer this value coefficient actually from the code or what I have told in earlier in earlier session also. We need to cross verify all these values before you do the checks. Yes. Yes. And finally, on calculating, after verification, after calculation, we are getting the maximum vertical movement as Mx wa cube as around 16.2 kilonewton meter that is the maximum vertical movement and similarly next is maximum horizontal movement again what is minus 0 0.0 minus 0 0.044 so and after substituting this value coefficients in the equation m by w a cube we are getting maximum horizontal movement as 11.88 kilonewton meter 11.88 kilonewton meter. And next, design for vertical uh, moment, design for vertical moment. Maximum vertical moment calculated is 23.22 kilo Newton meter, 23.22 kilo Newton meter and for which we have to calculate what is the FD depth required. So, FD depth required in the working test method is calculated as D is equal to square root of entire thing square root of entire thing that is square root of m max divided by q into b where b is taken as around 1000 mm b equal to 1000 mm where b is taken as 1000 mm and q is the design coefficient balance moment coefficient on everything of this we require the d required is coming as around 122.99 mm uh, providing 16 mm bars with a clear cover of uh, 40 mm, with the clear cover of 40 mm, the total depth required D is equal to, yeah, around 180 mm, around 180 mm, the total depth required is rounded up to 180 mm and actual effort is provided is equal to 180 minus 40 minus 16 by 2, I repeat the actual effort is provided D is equal to 180 minus clear cover 40 minus half bar diameter that is 8, 8. After reducting all these things, we are getting D as 
132 millimeters. So, after that, calculation of main reinforcement AST is equal to maximum moment divided by sigma AST, Leveron coefficient J and D, Leveron coefficient J and D. After substituting the values of the above parameters, we calculate this AST as around 1517.59 square mm. My dear students, you need to calculate, check all these things in your calculator. Whatever given is, you have to check everything what has been done in this uh, exercise. So, providing 16 mm diverse, spacing required is 125 mm center to center. 125 mm center to center. Next, distribution steel. Yeah, maximum steel. So, maximum steel required is, yes, of since the our maximum uh, thickness of the section provided, the maximum dimension of the provided is 180 mm, which is less than 200 mm. And also the maximum dimension of the tank is also less than 15 meters. The minimum steel requirement for this is 0 0.24 percent for the refund bars of Fe4 and 5. So, for that, yeah, the minimum steel required is 0 0.24 percent which comes to 432 square mm. Square mm. So, providing 8 mm diabars, and the required spacing is 155 mm center to center, 155, 115 mm center to center. So, these are the requirements for the main reinforcement. Next is uh, disbursement of reinforcement for vertical steel, for vertical movement. Inner surface, inner surface of the tank, vertical steel, 16 mm diameter bars at 125 mm center to center. Inner surface, 125 mm center to center and horizontal distribution of 8 mm, 8 mm dia bars at a facing of 115 mm center to center for an height of 0 0.33 or 1 meter above the base for a height of 0 0.33 or 1 meter above the base. So, as I told you this reinforcement, so this reinforcement for vertical steel is provided as I have shown now. So, this is so this is the vertical steel. So, this vertical steel is provided for a height of uh, 0.33a of 1 meter, 0.33a of 1 meter, and this is uh, 16 mm diameter bars spacing at 125 mm center to center and for this uh, we have provided distribution steel, we have provided distribution steel of 8 mm diameter. These are all distribution steel of 8 mm diameter at a spacing of 115 mm center to center of for a height of 1 meter for a height of 1 meter from the base and this steel is anchored in the base slab. The vertical steel provided is anchored at the you know, anchored in the base slab, and here we need to provide the same distribution bars here also in the inside the loop. Same distribution steel is provided inside in the uh, loop also. Uh, next is yes, design for horizontal movement. Design for horizontal movement. For the long movement, the maximum horizontal movement calculated is. 16.2 kN meter and for the short wall the maximum horizontal movement obtained was 11.88 kN meter. These two movements are acting at a joint as shown. This is a rigid joint. This is a rigid joint. This A joint A is a rigid joint. So, two movements are acting as shown in the figure and we need to calculate what is the final joint moment acting at that particular joint A, joint A. For this, we need to analyze this by moment distribution method. We need to analyze this by moment distribution method. So, how to do this moment distribution method? The basic steps are, we need to calculate first the stiffness of the member AB. We need to calculate the stiffness of the member AB. So, KAB, since the, all the joints are rigid, 
uh, taken as I by L, I by L that is the stiffness of member AB. Stiffness of AC that is KAC is called I by L by getting the value. Sigma K gives you total stiffness at a particular joint. On distribution factor for AB is obtained as KAB by Sigma K comes to 0 0.410. On distribution factor for AC is obtained as around 0 0.590. After getting this values, we need to carry out the moment distribution. We need to calculate the moment distribution at joint A, joint ECA, members for AB and AC and friction moments or the joint moments which were calculated for long wall and short wall, that is the values which are entered there. I told you I entered here minus and plus. Why minus here plus here? Because of this reason. This is a anti-clockwise moment, moment joint for FEM for AB. FEM for AB is a clockwise moment. If I take positive sign for clockwise, then I should take negative sign for anti-clockwise moment. I should take negative sign for anti-clockwise moment. So after taking this sign convention, yes, negative moment for anti, yes, long moment and positive moment. Balance one, the difference between the two is distributed with the opposite sign based on this distribution factor. And finally, when the sum of this is the final joint moment obtained in the rectangle time that is 14.429 kilonewton meter. For this joint moment, we need to design the section. So, yes, maximum common joint moment M obtained from the moment distribution is 14.429 kilonewton meter. Next, water pressure is considered at a height of A by 4 a 1 meter around the base slab. So, A by 4 means 3 by 4. So, 3 by 4 is 0 0.75 meter. It is less than 1 meter. Hence, the water pressure at a height of 1 meter above the base slab is equal to A minus 1 that is 3 by 2, that is 3 minus 1. A is 3 total height minus 1, 3 minus 1, 2 meters from the top. This is a very, very important exercise. This is though why this is important means there is interaction of the interaction between long wall and short wall. The short wall will induce a tension for the long wall and similarly the long wall also will introduce a direct tension to the short wall. That is the basic behavior in the rigid joint tanks. In the rigid joint tanks. So, at what height we should consider to calculate this tension? Direct tension is at a, at a height of a by 4 or 1 meter, whichever is above, whichever is above from the base. So, 3 by 4 is 0 0.75 less than 1 meter. Hence, I am considering 1 meter above the base first from, from the top comes to 2 meter from the top. Therefore, water pressure at that level is W into 2 that is 20 kilonewton per square meter, 20 kilonewton per square meter. And considering the long wall, the tension force transferred from the short wall to the long wall is pressure that is P, 20 kilonewton per meter square into C that is the dimension of the short wall, 4.5 meters by 2. I need to explain regarding about this, what is this effect. So, this is a, this one rectangle wall. So, all the pressures are acting all the pressures acting so if i consider this long wall this long wall this wall is being pulled by this this short wall is being pulled by the internal water pressure this short wall being pulled will transfer a tensile force to the long wall the pulling of the short wall transfers the tensile force T to the long wall. This is the concept of design which has been undertaken over a century from the over a century from the past. So, this short wall induces a tension in the long wall. Similarly, the pulling of the, uh, the long wall also offers tension to the short wall, will also offer tension, direct tension to the short wall. 
So, this force also need to be considered since it has been not mentioned let us go from the concept wise. So, this, this is calculated for a water pressure at a height of A by 4 or 1 meter which is above from the base. So, from this after do this calculation the T the tension force acting on the long wall comes to 45 kilo Newton comes to 45 kilo Newton. So, after getting this force X x is the distance to the center of the wall cross section to the center of the main reinforcement. So, this I need to explain to you what about this. If this is your wall section, if this is your wall section and if this is your reinforcement, this is your reinforcement provided main reinforcement and this is your axis of the wall, the distance between these two is known as x. The distance between the axis of the wall on the centroid of the reinforcement is called as the distance x. x is the distance of the center of the wall cross section to the centroid of the main reinforcement. So, this is the axis of the wall, this is the wall axis. From the wall axis to the center of the reinforcement, this distance I am calling it as x. So, x is nothing but 180 by 2 minus the effective cover to the reinforcement which comes to 42 mm, which comes to 42 mm. I repeat, x is the total thickness by 2 minus effective cover to the tension steel, which comes to 42 mm. So, when you calculate AST, this is interaction. This tension, this tension, direct tension, full transferred from the short wall will reduce the bending moment by few, by few quantity. Hence, for that moment, we calculate the steel. And in addition to that, we also calculate what is the total sigma steel required for that tension as a separately and add them together. This is the concept of design which has been exist their existence since more than 100 of years. Yes, on substituting these values, on substituting the values of M, T, X and the design coefficients, we are getting AST as around 1194.73 square millimeters. Uh, providing 16 mm diameter bars, spacing required is 165, spacing required is 165 mm central to center along with vertical distribution steel of 8 mm diameter, 8 mm diameter at 115 mm center to center, 115 mm center to center. So, this is about the design of the, this one, corner steel for the long wall. Uh, next is Design of horizontal bending moment in the middle zone of the long wall. In the middle zone of the long wall. What is meant by middle zone of the long wall? As you seen, if this is your long wall, so here we are having corner moment. Here we are having corner moment. Of course, in the middle also we will be having span moment. We will be having span moment, span moment, corner moment if you take corner moment as negative moment in the middle we will be having positive moment or span moment. We need to calculate that moment. For that moment we have to refer the coefficient along the direction where the y is 0, where the y is 0. So, for that we need to refer to the co uh, table once again back. Yes. So, we need to calculate the axis where y is 0. When y is 0, it is this location which gives me the maximum positive bending moment in the wall. So, searching along those along where y is equal to 0, I am getting the coefficients. Yes, I am getting the mag coefficient of mag, this is I getting a positive coefficient means it is a positive moment means sagging moment 
a positive moment, sagging moment. Maximum value I am getting is around 0 0.027. So, calculate the moment long wall m by w s cube, the moment is coming at around 7.29 kilo newton meter and h requirement for this is 493 square mm. So, providing 10 m diverse along horizontal direction, spacing required is 155 mm center to center at the outer zone of the wall, at the outer zone of the wall. Next is vertical distribution steel of 8 m diameter at 115 mm center to center is provided at outer layer of the slab at the outer layer of the slab. So, this is about the design requirements for the long wall and note the mid zone reinforcement provided for the long wall the same reinforcement is also provided for the short wall and the corner reinforcement provided for the long wall shall also be extended to the short wall, shall also be extended to the short wall. Since the maximum bending moment comes for the long wall, the same reinforcement has been extended to short wall also. And when I show the reinforcement details, here I can show you clearly how the things are done. Next is reinforcement for the base slab. So, provide thickness of the base slab is around 180 mm, 180 mm. Yeah, same as vertical thickness, same as vertical wall. So, the base lap thickness is provided same as that of the vertical wall uh, with a minimum shield of 8 mm diameter at 115 mm center to center along both ways, along the both ways. So, next is we will test the question about the reinforcement provided for this. This is very, very important. So, this is a rectangle wall. Reinforcement details uh, with cross section along the long wall and the base slab, long wall and the base slab. Let us go one by one. So, first is uh, I will show you the vertical fractional steel, vertical fractional steel of 60 mm diameter at 125 mm center to center. That is this steel provided forms a loop and goes, gets anchored there and this is 1 meter 0.33 times of A. And this also will be 1 meter where it is going to anchor in the base slab. This is about the vertical steel. And next, what I have shown in circle is the reinforcement for the long wall corner joint reinforcement 60 mm diameter at 165 mm center to center. And what I have shown in this circle reinforcement, this is the mid zone reinforcement for the long wall mid zone reinforcement for the long wall which is 10 mm diameter at 155 mm center to center and these vertical steels or the uh, minimum steel provided that is 8 mm, you can see 8 mm at 115 mm center to center which is the distribution steel. Uh, what this is about this one and next is this is the reinforcement which are going to provide for the base slab of 18 mm thick. So, we are going to we are providing two layers, one the top and bottom. For each layers, we are providing 8 mm bars at a spacing of 115 mm center to center along both directions in the two layers. So, this is about the reinforcement required for a tangle slab. And of course, as I told you earlier case, at the corner, corner, if required, we can also provide a haunch at the corner to prevent uh, stress concentration that is not been shown in this particular slide, but as a designer's practice or from this one, we can also provide a haunch here of suitable size say of 150 mm and provide haunch reinforcement there to see that no stress concentration develops at the curry of the corner. So, this is about the detailing requirements of a rectangular water tank free at top and fixed it at all the edges and also at the base. Overall, I would like to tell following things. First thing you have to design must be very, very accurate if our water tanks, no tension must develop due to forces or to natural causes or natural forces. What are the forces? Forces are due to water pressure, other things what must be considered. So, what they mill for forces mill due to water pressure. 
and the natural causes are due to seasonal variations due to seasonal variations and all these things must be care of by properly designing to the requirements as per the code of IS 3370. As I told you once again I repeat the crack must not appear in tanks. Once if crack appears after that any restoration what we do is called patchwork which is not good. So to prevent patchwork our design must be perfect. So if a design is perfect the structures will last for its intended life. To give a few example for this long lasting structures we are having our own reservoir Krishna Raja Sagar reservoir that is uh, the, that was uh, uh, built under the directions of Sir Mokshagvindam Vishwasharaya exactly century ago. Even today the structure is majestically standing upright uh, serving the needs of the society. At those times, 100 years ago, they we used only lime mortar for the joints for the construction of that uh, masonry, uh, stone masonry uh, wall. They used lime mortar. The quality of lime water, a uh, lime mortar controlling all the requirements were done under the able guidance of Sir M. Vishwasharaya that is still even today standing majestically. That is all I can say for the designers to see that our designs must be perfect in all respect about for this for the future uh, uh, for the future uh, for the future or the intended life of the structure. Thank you one and all for my for your patience for, for, uh, for my lecture. Thank you, thank you.